Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about romance books where there is longing in them. I love a good romance book where one of the characters or both of the characters have been longing over the other one for a while. I love it. I love it so much. I think it just makes it even like cuter because they're just waiting on this person for a long time and they might be too anxious or too nervous to go ask them out or approach them or anything and I just think it's so cute, honestly. Okay, so the first one I'm gonna talk about isn't necessarily longing because like it's cute. They're longing because one of the characters messed up. <laughs> And that is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. So this is a friend's to lovers romance. Elliot and Macy ended up meeting when they were children. Um, they lived next door to each other for a little bit. Her vacation house was next door to his like at home house. And so she would go see him every time they were on vacation with her dad. And so this book like jumps back and forth to when they were children and then to present time when they are not friends at all anymore. And so Elliot and Maisie end up running into each other one day in present time. And Elliot is just besotted by her. And he has been in love with her for forever and Maisie wants honestly nothing to do with him and so you have to read the book to figure out what happened to their relationship, what happened to their friendship, why they're not friends anymore, and why they actually still may or may not love each other throughout all of that. Elliot in here is definitely longing over Maisie. He has been for years and Maisie, it takes her a while to realize that she has also been longing over Elliot even after the thing that happened between the two of them when they were younger. But I feel like this is a great friends to lovers. I feel like this is one of Christina Lauren's best books they've written. Next, I have Beauty and the Blacksmith by Tessa Dare. This one is so stinking cute. This is about Diana and Erin. So Diana is kind of like a lady in Spindle Cove. This is a novella in the Spindle Cove series by Tessa Dare. And her mother wants her to marry a rich man. That's what she's always wanted for Diana. And she's beautiful and young. And she feels like out of all of her sisters, Diana is the most able to find a rich and influential husband. However, Diana cannot stop longing over the town blacksmith named Aaron. She is smitten every time that she sees him. She's nervous. She's mumbly bumbly. <laughs> like she gets so nervous when she's around him, but she'll purposefully break her own jewelry just so she can go talk to him so he can fix it for her. And it is so cute. And like Aaron is like kind of catching on to it. And Aaron has also been longing over Diana for quite a long time, but he has never said anything to her because he doesn't think that she reciprocates the feelings because she is of higher class than him. But the two of them in this book obviously finally reveal their feelings for one another and it is so stinking cute. The two of them are longing over each other for quite a long time, but they both think they can't have the other person, but they actually can and it is so cute. This is one of my favorite Tessa Dare novellas for sure. So please, please, please pick this one up. Next I have The Fae King's Curse by Jamie Schlosser. This is a fantasy romance and oh my gosh, I love this one too. <laughs> this is about Quinn and Kyrian. And so they met actually when they were children. Quinn lives on this ranch with some property and there's also a river that runs through it. And she finds Kyrian almost drowning in the river. She ends up saving him and saving his life. I think they're both like 11 or 12 when this happens. And Kyrian is actually also blind. And so he's not able to see. And he is also not from this earth. He is from a fantasy land and he was brought to earth through a portal. He walked through a portal that actually opens only once a year but the time difference between these two worlds between earth and this fantasy land are different than one another so one year on the fantasy land is one day equals one day on earth so quinn is seeing carrion every day he comes back to see her every day in her time but every year he grows older because in his fantasy land he is growing a year older if that makes sense i know that's a little bit confusing but the portal in his land only opens once a year but in Quinn's time, it's actually every day. So she's happy she gets to see um, Kyrian every single day, but it takes Kyrian forever to see Quinn. And so Kyrian is like growing up before her eyes. And by the time she's 18, he is hundreds of years old. And so I think she's either 18 or 19 when she approaches him one day and is like, hey, you can't see me anymore for quite a long time. I am not gonna be here because I'm going to college. And he's like, well, when is the next time I'm gonna see you? And she's like, in my time, it's going to be 90 days around, a couple, three months. And he is furious. He's like, that will be like 90, 100 years for me. I cannot handle not seeing you for that long. And so he decides to take her, like whisk her away to his fantasy land to be with him. And oh my gosh, it is so cute. The two of them have been logging over each other for a while. Kyrian knows that like for a while that Quinn is like his. However, 
um, of course because of the different ages like he's never done anything she's not comfortable with and hasn't like pursued her in any way until she's at the appropriate age obviously and before that they were just best friends and they've been logging over each other in a friendship sort of way and then when she becomes like a woman he's like mm, I may love her <laughs> But uh, there's a curse put on Kyrian and a bunch of other royals where they were cursed to not have any sight until they meet with they, they meet their mate. However, the way that people meet their mate is by seeing them. And Kyrian obviously can't see Quinn. And so it's a battle to figure out whether or not Quinn is actually his mate. And oh my gosh, I love this one. Please read it. <laughs> it is so good. I need to read the rest of the series. I love this one and the book before this one. The prequel is about Kyrian's parents and how their his parents fell in love. And it is so swoony. I love that one. That one's like a... Romeo and Juliet-esque rivaling family situation and oh, that one's good as well um but anyway read this one it is so good the longing in here is great next I have Rookie Move by Serena Bowen this is a hockey romance so this is the second chance romance between Leo and Georgia Georgia is working for this hockey team I don't remember her position in the hockey team but she might be like a PR manager of some sort and then Leo was just hired onto the team just put on the team as a rookie and so they're in for a rude awakening when they see each other for the first time because they have not seen each other since they were in high school they were high school sweethearts but unfortunately when they were seniors georgia got sexually assaulted by another person and um she felt like she was a burden to leo and so she broke up with him leo has been just kind of in a rut ever since when it comes to women um because he has always held a torch and always has been longing over georgia because he does love her and so the two of them are finally seeing each other again for quite a long time and Georgia is very hesitant to start something up with Leo because of what she has been through um, but of course this is a second chance romance so they finally get back together so yeah Leo has been definitely longing over Georgia for quite a long time and he will do anything to have her be his again <laughs> next I have shift just got real by Ruby Dixon this is a bear shifter romance uh, this is the book third book in R Ruby Dixon's shift series the bear bites series whatever you want to call it I didn't really care for any of the other books besides this one this one is the only book that I actually liked out of that series unfortunately so this is the romance between Ryan and Mal and so Mal is a bear shifter and one day when he's at the grocery store he can scent his mate and he's like oh, where is she oh my gosh I'm so happy I can find my mate she he finds her and it's Ryan and she is underage and he is like disgusted with himself he's like I cannot believe my mate is underage I have to go away so I'm not tempted to be with her because it's not appropriate that's not appropriate at all and she's like 16 or 17 at this point and so he is quite older than her and so he basically becomes a recluse and runs off into the mountains and lives in the mountains for quite a while um it's years later ryan is now i believe like 21 or 22 she has been seeing mal every now and then when he comes into town to get supplies and whatnot and she wants him so badly she doesn't know that they're mates but she knows that there's a connection between the two of them and so one night mal is going to check on ryan because sometimes he just goes and checks on her and he doesn't want to force her to do anything she doesn't want to do and she just goes to check on her and he ends up getting like injured and ryan ends up helping him and they end up revealing their feelings for one another but the, both of them have been longing over each other for quite a long time but mal feels like he can't have her because of her young age because she is quite younger than him but man this one is so good i really like this one if you want a good short shifter age gap romance please pick this one up next i have stalked by the kraken by lillian lark this is another paranormal romance this one is about gideon and rose rose is a witch and she also works at this matchmaking company and gideon is a um a shifter a kraken shifter and he has like tentacles when he shifts and so he can send his mate and he believes that rose is his mate <laughs> and so one day he goes into her matchmaking office and is like hey i want to be matched with someone and she's like okay great i'll match you up with somebody and she, he's like no i want to match up with you specifically though and i want to have three dates with you and she decides to go for it and so before he does approach her he has been kind of stalking her for a little bit wondering where she goes where she lives who she is as a person and he has been longing over her for quite a while and it takes uh rose a little bit of a longer time to feel the same way towards gideon because she doesn't know that they're mates and she doesn't have a mating bond like he does this one is very hot this one is very fun this is the only lillian lark book that i have read but i am definitely going to try to read more from her because she is very fun in her writing very descriptive 
and just like whimsical and magical because she is a witch like there's just magical things going on in this one that I love next I have always only you by Chloe Lise I love this book it's one of my favorites of the year this is about Ren and Frankie Ren is a hockey player and Frankie is the social media manager for the hockey team and Frankie is a little bit of a grump and Ren right here is the sunshine in here um and Frankie has rheumatoid arthritis and she has uh, autism so there's great disability rep in here um and Ren has been longing over Frankie for years but they've been chatting they they're they're friends you know and he knows that she claims that she is not ready for a romantic relationship at all and so he's been patiently waiting for her and biding his time because he knows that Frankie is for him he knows it he swears by it and so he has been waiting for her for quite a long time just been longing over this woman and Frankie is just starting to realize how attractive Ren is because he is <laughs> but frankie's house ends up getting broken into and ren offers her a place to stay at his house and so they're forced to live in the same house together for a little bit and oh my gosh it's so good i love this one frankie and ren forever i love them so stinking much <laughs> next i have neighbor dearest by penelope ward this is the romance between damien and chelsea and they're actually next door neighbors to one another the walls between their apartments are definitely thin and damien has been having a ball listening to chelsea's therapy calls and chelsea can hear him laughing at her through their therapy calls because their therapy calls are just like bizarre and hilarious at points <laughs> because of this they get kind of put into a rough start at first they're not friends at first because chelsea is very embarrassed by damien overhearing her and all that stuff but the two of them slowly start to get to know one another and they become legitimately best friends and then the friendship grows into something more obviously but damien won't let it grow at all is the thing like their feelings grow but damien won't let the relationship actually happen and he's hiding a secret as to why the two of them cannot be together the thing about this book is i don't like how it is a secret because i don't feel like an illness that somebody has a chronic condition a chronic illness a disease that somebody has should be a plot twist or a secret from a significant other and so do with that what you will i enjoyed this one besides that though <laughs> they're both longing over each other for sure both of them want one another so badly but damien just won't let it happen he won't he doesn't want to risk hurting chelsea at all but um of course their feelings kind of like burst and they're forced to actually be together so um i really enjoyed this one and i really recommend it next i have haven by darcy rose this is around a 50 page novella this is about eve and dean and they are step siblings their parents got married a few years ago um and eve has always been longing over dean for forever ever since she was a teenager when she first set eyes on him and then when it is her 18th birthday dean finally comes back home he is quite a few years older than her he finally comes back home and sees her on her 18th birthday and is like huh uh, I feel like I I think I'm feeling stuff for Eve <laughs> he finally realizes that Eve isn't just this little girl anymore and he is struggling really struggling with having feelings for his stepsister I thought this was super fun super hot Eve is the one that has been longing over Dean for quite a long time so that's the longing aspect in here but um, after he sees her on her 18th birthday and has seen her hasn't seen her in quite a few years he starts longing over her as well and starts longing over a woman he thinks he cannot have um but of course it's a romance they're gonna get together so <laughs> and lastly on this list i have my dad's best friend by katie robert this is the forbidden romance between blake and jonas jonas is blake's dad's best friend and so Jonas is obviously off limits for her. <laughs> so this book starts out with Blake appearing on Jonas's doorstep and it's like, hey, I am getting a promotion in the co my dad's company. I feel like you could help me a lot in this certain project she is working on. And he doesn't want anything to do with it. He doesn't want anything to do with her because he feels like she is too much of a temptation for him. But then there's this horrible storm going on and she is forced to stay over at his house for the night. And through them being in forced proximity with one another, <laughs> the two of them um, finally let off some very pent up tension and steam they've had. <laughs> the audiobook for this one was fire amazing please listen to any of katie roberts audiobooks because i feel like they're great this was just super fun and entertaining and um they have both been longing over each other for quite a long time but it is very forbidden so none of they haven't revealed their feelings until the point in this book so there you have it those are 10 romance books that have longing in them please let me know down below if you have read any of these books or if you plan to or if you want to just comment an emoji of some sort to know let me know you have watched this far leave me a um 
a crown emoji because we talked about the fake king's curse he is a king so let's do that let's do a crown emoji down below but anyways thank you all so, so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all Thank you.